Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's health check. Today I'm going to talk about a very serious condition, but thank goodness not a very common condition called stomach cancer. So stomach cancer obviously can happen both in uh, males and females. However, it's more common, twice as common in males in the Western world uh, who are over the age of 55, obviously can happen in younger age, who are chronic smokers. The, what does patient complain of? And in early cancer, the symptoms are so mild, like a bit of heartburn, indigestion, uh, patients get uh, mild abdominal pain. But the most important thing is all these symptoms, uh, most patients, uh, most people get uh, on a day, almost day to day basis after eating something spicy, etc, etc. However, some patients get these symptoms all the time. But these symptoms do not improve on antacid tablets if somebody has got underlying stomach cancer. So that is very important to think. So if anyone develops these symptoms who are of an older age, man, smoker, or even if a lady who does not smoke, then they should seek early, early appointment with the doctor so it can be looked into further and further tests can take. As cancer progresses over the next uh, few weeks or few months, then obviously the symptoms become a bit more serious. And at that stage, patient tends to go to the doctor because now they're getting more and more abdominal pain. This abdominal pain is not getting better with taking any painkillers or antacid tablets. They're getting loss of appetite and they can't eat very much. The portion size is very small. Sometimes food gets stuck as well. Um, they get severe weight loss and they're losing a lot of weight at this stage, you know. And um, their blood count goes down, especially iron levels in the blood go down. They become anemic. And they can also see blood in the poo. Usually this is quite dark red blood or even black emotions. And sometimes they can even vomit blood and that is again a, a sign of a very advanced. What are the different varieties of stomach cancer? Now, as uh, I discussed in my videos before, inside lining of the stomach, like elsewhere in our body, in our digestive system, is lined by different cells, little cells everywhere. Yes, like a mosaic on the ground, on our floor. Those cells, they can form into cancer. And that is by far the commonest variety of stomach cancer. Ninety. I think over 90% of the cancers in the stomach come from the lining of the stomach. However, muscle, as we discussed before, the stomach also has muscle in its wall and also has other things like nerves, blood vessels, etc., etc., lymphatic vessels, and all these things can form cancer. Other variety of stomach cancer, the way it look like inside the stomach, this is what they look like inside the stomach. This I've drawn like a little lump coming out. Now these are called GIST tumors, gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Again, not very common tumors. However, as they grow bigger from being benign, they can turn into something a bit more serious, cancers. These are the very common types of stomach cancers, which I've which I written down as fungating. Fungating means literally protruding into the stomach. And when you look at it with a camera, they look like uh, like um, broccoli or or cauliflower or seaweed, if you want to call it, or coral in this inside the sea. That's what it normally looks like. Some stomach cancers can present with ulcers. And if you have not seen my ulcer video, on stomachs uh, one before then please watch it it will give you more information some of them can look like ulcers uh, and some of them are very difficult to pick up even with the camera because they run under the lining of the stomach and it make the stomach look like leather bottle so you can't see anything much on the surface because it's under the surface however you um, uh, the stomach is because it's become so stiff it does not blow up with air easily when an endoscopist put the camera down and they call it leather bottle stomach because with the camera you can't see much of the cancer that is very difficult to pick up there are different varieties of cancer uh, as well which i'll uh, briefly the mention. main three varieties of stomach cancer that we get there are other more rare varieties as well the main variety which i talked about earlier which comes from the lining cells of the stomach and over 90 percent of them are adenocarcinomas the second one gastrointestinal stromal tumor gist tumors these um, uh, occur from the uh, nerve cells from the muscle cells uh, from the blood vessels and 
their main way of presenting is bleeding. Um, the third type is called a lymphoma, which arises from the lymphatic uh, lining of the stomach, lymph glands we are going to talk about in the future. So how is it diagnosed? The main two investigations to diagnose stomach cancer, like for uh, diagnosing ulcer the stomach is an endoscopy, which is a camera going into the stomach through our mouth or through our nose. And the second is a barium x-ray in which a patient drinks uh, a chalky substance and x-rays are taken, which will show the presence uh, of um, uh, something in the stomach which does not look right and could be a stomach cancer. The good uh, thing about endoscopy as compared to barium x-ray is that uh, during endoscopy, uh, endoscopists can also take some biopsies, little samples uh, of from the edge of the ulcer or what looks like a cancer and the diagnosis can be clear. One of my previous videos when I spoke about uh, cancer of the esophagus or a food pipe, I did mention that every cancer that is diagnosed has to be staged. By staging means that we have to know whether cancer is an early cancer or an advanced cancer. So are we looking for cure or are we looking to control the patient's symptoms and trying to increase their um, lifespan, uh, but not looking at cure and improving their quality of life. So several scans are done after the cancer has been diagnosed with an endoscopy or a barium x-ray. Then the, one of the commonest scans, the CT scan, computer tomography scan, this is available in most hospitals and just to see whether cancer has spread anywhere else or not. There are three main ways of spreading of the cancer. It can spread locally. So from the stomach, it can grow outside like a, a crab um, clawing outside and uh, getting invo involving the tissues around the stomach like the pancreas or the liver um, or the blood vessels or the spleen, which are all sitting around the stomach and then can make the cure a wee bit more difficult. Other scan is a PET scan, uh, which is called positron emission tomography. This is now quite commonly used to see whether the tumor, even very small amount of tumor, has spread uh, further away from uh, the stomach itself, like the liver, the bones, um, in the lungs, etc., etc. The third type of scan is ultrasound scan. This is mainly to look at the, the liver. So if there's something in the liver which does not look right in patients with stomach cancer, ultrasound can be done to make sure it's not spread from the cancer. Um, the, uh, this type of ultrasound, which is done through an endoscope, which means there's a scanner inside the camera. And when the endoscopist put the camera down, they can um, scan it, uh, scan the stomach from inside, the cancer from inside. The last but not the least is called laparoscopy, which is a keyhole uh, put through the belly button, a camera put through the belly button under general anesthetic, and, and the surgeon can look around whether there is any spread of cancer inside the lining of the tummy or not. So next thing to talk about is uh, about treatment of stomach cancer. Um, if any cancer needs to be treated, it's important to know, first of all, that first of all, how advanced the cancer is. So we just talked about staging of the cancer. So we are thinking about whether stomach can, uh, the stomach cancer can be cured or it cannot be cured. So obviously the treatment changes. And secondly, that how fit is the patient? Because all the treatment that is given for stomach cancer, which I'll discuss in a second, um, has its side effects. And if the patient is not very fit, then the treatment options are limited. To, uh, treat the, uh, to treat the patient. So there are three main uh, ways of treating stomach cancer. Um, one is chemotherapy, one is surgery, and extra treatment called radiotherapy. Now, none of these uh, treatments are side effect free, and uh, chemotherapy, as uh, most of us know, can be quite toxic and gives lots of side effects, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, hair loss, etc., etc. Surgery, again, is your patient has to be fit for an operation, whether this operation is done for uh, removing the cancer completely, that is cure of the cancer, or it is done to relieve the patient's symptoms like blockage of the stomach. Uh, the third form of treatment is radiotherapy or extra treatment. Some of these treatments can be given um, with each other, so in combination, uh, chemotherapy, surgery can be given in combination. 
or they can be given on their own depending on whether we are looking for cure of the cancer or we're trying to just make the patient's quality of life better and giving them slightly extra months uh, to, to live. So we'll talk briefly about surgery for stomach cancer. So it depends which part of the stomach the cancer is in. So the first cancer I've drawn is in the uh, very close to the bottom of the stomach. That's the top of the stomach. That is our food pipe. So mouth is up there. Food comes down this way. And this is the first part of our small intestine, um, which I've shown in my previous videos called the duodenum. So cancer in this case is down here. So the surgeons have an option of removing only part of the stomach. So what I have gridded in green is that the bit of the stomach they can remove. And when they remove that part of the stomach, so that part of the stomach is gone and they bring the part of the small intestine and they join it to the stomach. So the food comes this way and go down this way. In this case, the cancer obviously is gone because the cancer was early perhaps and the patient had a good chance of cure. In this case, the situation is a bit different because the cancer perhaps is not curable and it is blocking the stomach where the outlet is. It is very close to the, st to the outlet of the stomach and the cancer is too advanced and cannot be removed completely. So in this case, what the surgeon has done, bring the part of the small intestine and join it to the stomach over here. So food, instead of going down this way, because it's blocking in the outlet, the food comes down this way and goes down into this part of the small intestine. So at least the patient can eat and drink normally. Now what happens to the if the part of the stomach is removed? It really does not make too much difference after the patient has recovered from surgery. The food portion size is slightly smaller but nothing major because this part of the stomach does expand with time, does become bigger with time and the patient have a relatively normal life and can eat and drink almost normal food. In the second situation that I have drawn over here, the cancer is quite far up in the stomach, in the upper part of the stomach, so that's the food pipe. And in this case, the surgeon is most likely have to remove the whole of the stomach or almost the whole of the stomach. So you can see most of the stomach has been removed and they bring the bit of a small intestine and join it to the bottom end of the gullet or bit of stomach that's left behind, they join it to that. In that case, the patient obviously cannot have a normal size meal. So they have to graze during the day. So they are snacking, having five or six meals a day, which are very small in portion. And, uh, but after a while they get used to it and they should be able to have a normal quality of life. Stomach does help with the absorption of certain vitamins like vitamin B12 because stomach is gone now. So patient cannot absorb vitamin B12 and they will after a while require injections of B12 every few months to keep their vitamin B12 levels up. Otherwise they will become anemic and have other problems from not having vitamin B12 in their body.